does the hospital have a right to detain you? I know that's a really strange concept for, for many Westerners. Does the hospital have a right to detain you and prevent you from leaving the hospital until your bill is settled? Now, um, again, that's, that's a really strange concept, the idea that you would go to a hospital and if you couldn't afford to pay the bill, they would not let you leave. Uh, suddenly you went from being injured or sick to being detained. And, uh, and every day that you're detained, of course, the bill is going to continue to mount up simply for the fact that you're using up a room or a bed there in the hospital. Um, and you may think, well, I'll just get dressed and walk out. Well, no, you won't. <laughs> um, the hospitals here have security guards, and at most places it's to keep people out. Uh, here it's to prevent patients from skipping out on their bill. So before we discuss this any further, let's take an actual look at the uh, Act of Congress, which was passed again here in 2007. And uh, I'll put it up here on the screen, and uh, I'm going to put on my reading glasses. <clears throat> Now it's very short. Uh, I'm gonna. It's it's written in three sections. Um, we'll go through each section, and and I'll just clarify. I'll first read it as it's written, and then we'll just clarify what it's saying. And uh, and by the way, I'm not here to give you legal advice. Uh, I'm just here to tell you what the law says. We're gonna both look at it together, and we're gonna read it together and see what it says. That's all we're gonna do here. As you can see here on the screen. Uh, this is Republic of the Philippines, Congress of the Philippines, Metro Manila, 13th Congress, uh, and this is known as Republic Act Number 9439, an act prohibiting the detention of patients in hospitals and medical clinics on grounds of non-payment of hospital bills or medical expenses. Now, so far, that sounds pretty good. I mentioned it's in three sections. Here is section number one. It shall be unlawful for any hospital or medical clinic in the country to detain or to otherwise cause, directly or indirectly, the detention of patients who have fully or partially recovered or have been adequately attended to or who may have died for reasons of non-payment in part or in full of hospital bills or medical expenses. Now, if you break down, there's a lot of qualifying uh, statements uh, in that sentence. Um, but if you break it down, essentially, <clears throat> it's saying it shall be unlawful for any hospital or medical clinic, uh, so that's, that's who this law applies to, uh, to detain. Uh, and it, it's just saying whether you're detaining them directly or indirectly, whether by coercion or by force, um, a patient who uh, has fully or partially recovered uh, based upon, uh, for reasons of, based upon the non-payment, whether it be in part or in full, their hospital bill. So it's basically saying it's unlawful for a hospital to, uh, or medical clinic to hold you and detain you in any manner due to the non-full payment uh, of your hospital bill. Now again, that sounds really good. That sounds like, hey, the, you know, this is this is Congress looking out for the people. Uh, but now let's let's look at section number two, which which uh, further defines uh, how this this act is applied. And this is this is where everything takes a whole different turn. Here in section two, patients who have fully or partially recovered, and who already wish to leave the hospital or medical clinic but are financially incapable to settle in part or in full their hospitalization expenses including professional fees and medicines shall be allowed to leave the hospital or medical clinic with a right to demand the issuance of the corresponding medical certificate and other pertinent papers required for the re release of the patient from the hospital or medical clinic upon the execution of a promissory note covering the unpaid obligation. The promissory note shall be secured by either a mortgage or by a guarantee of a co-maker who will be jointly and severally liable with the patient for the unpaid obligation. In the case of a deceased patient, the corresponding death certificate and other documents required for internment 
and other purposes shall be released to any of his surviving relatives requesting for the same. Provided, however, that patients who stayed in private rooms shall not be covered by this act. Okay, so what did we just read here? Again, it's much simpler to understand if you just break it down and kind of separate the qualifying parts of the statement. Starting at the very beginning, uh, it essentially is saying that patients who have fully or partially recovered and wish to leave the hospital uh, may do so. And it's talking about, uh, as far as the bill, they're defining the bill as being the hospital expenses as well as the doctor's fees and any medicines that were ordered. Uh, by the way, uh, most hospitals, they are not going to just provide the medicine and then bill you later. Uh, most hospitals, you actually have to uh, have somebody go out to the pharmacy and, and purchase the, the medications. Uh, not all the time, but most of the time. So then the, the act goes on in section two uh, to state that any um, release documents, so if you needed the copies of your x-rays, copies of the work that they did, basically your file. It's saying that not only do they have to release you, but they also have to give you copies of your file, your x-rays, and anything else. And if, you're, if you died, the patients are, or the, uh, the relatives are entitled to a copy of the death certificate. But, there's a but. Uh, as you get down here about five sentences down, it qualifies what it is that, that forces the hospital uh, to, to let you go. It, it defines uh, when it is that the hospital cannot detain you. They cannot detain you, if you go down about six sentences here, uh, for the release of the patient from the hospital or medical clinic upon, this is the important part, upon the execution of a promissory note covering the unpaid obligation. Okay, let's stop right there. So what this sentence is saying is that the hospitals must release you and they must give you your documents so long as you have either paid the, the bill in full or if you're not able to pay the bill in full, you have put up this promissory note. Now, this is where all of a sudden now the hospitals can detain you. If you cannot pay the bill in cash, if you do not have insurance who the hospital accepts to pay the bill um, and you can't pay the bill in full, then whatever balance is owed, you're only going to leave that hospital if you can provide the hospital with a promissory note. Now a promissory note is not just a scrap of paper, it's not an IOU, it's not like uh, I'll come back later and settle this up with you and here's my signature. It's not as simple as that. What we're talking about is a notarized legal document, a legal promissory note that is backed up with real estate. If you don't have real estate to back up this promissory note, which is really no different than a loan uh, or pawning property, uh, then you can bring in a cosigner. And that's where it talks about here. Uh, the promissory note shall be secured by either a mortgage or by a guarantee of a co-maker. Here they use the term co-maker. They're really talking about what we call a co-signer uh, in, in the West. Uh, who will, and, and it talks about this, this co-signer or this co-maker who will be jointly and severally liable with the patient for the unpaid obligation. So in other words, if your neighbor, your <coughs> friend, your relative puts up their property uh, in this promissory note, which is then notarized uh, by an attorney and presented to the hospital, if that bill doesn't get paid, then they themselves, the person, the cosigner, stands to lose their property. It's counted just as much as their debt as it is your debt. Um, in fact, in, in some cases, they, it's, it's, it's happened, and I've, I've talked to people online, where the hospital bill uh, was about equal to the value of the property, and they simply wanted title transferred. They didn't even want to take the property uh, as, a, as a sort of a collateral. They simply wanted the property transferred, and then that would be accepted as payment. 
the, the property was lost in order to satisfy the bill. So you can see here, and then it goes into, uh, and the next uh, sentence, in the case of a deceased patient, uh, in order to get the death certificate and other documents, again, these, these rules apply. Now, uh, we'll go to section three and then we'll kind of just wrap up here. Um, section three, any officer or employee of the hospital or medical clinic responsible for releasing patients who violates the provisions of this act, and again, the provisions of the act we just read in section two, shall be punished by a fine of not less than 20,000 pesos, but not more than 50,000 pesos, or imprisonment of not less than one month, but not more than six months of both such fine and imprisonment at the discretion of the proper court. So section three is basically saying that if you give the hospital this promissory note, which is enough to cover the bill, these are the penalties for any hospital that refuses to then release you. But if you do not provide a promissory note uh, with a value able to cover the, the expenses of the bill, they can detain you. So what this act actually does is it defines when they can detain you and when they cannot detain you. They cannot detain you if you put forward a promissory note to cover the cost of the bill. Now we'll just kind of quickly go over sections 4, 5, and 6 only because they're here, but it really doesn't change anything from what we've discussed so far. The Department of Health shall promulgate the necessary rules and regulations to carry out the provisions of this act. In other words, Congress isn't going to take care of this themselves. The Department of Health is going to have jurisdiction over this. Section 5, if any provision of this act is declared void and unconstitutional, the remaining provisions hereof not affected thereby shall remain in full force and effect. So if this act was later contested in Congress, which doesn't seem to be the case, uh, and any portion of it was found to be unconstitutional, all the other portions would remain in effect. So let's look at number six, all these decrees, orders, rules and regulations or parts thereof inconsistent with this act are hereby repealed uh, or amended accordingly. So again, just kind of a reiteration of section number five. Um, if by any chance they wrote, wrote it in such a way that it was self-contradictory. Section number seven, this act shall take effect 15 days after its publication in two national pub newspapers of general circulation. And then there's a signature of the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House, Secretary of the Senate, and the Secretary General House of Representatives. So that's the entire act. Uh, what does that mean for you? Uh, that means um, if you have good insurance or you have a, a large amount of cash on hand, um, then you really don't, don't have a problem. Uh, you can go to the hospital and you can usually with a $250 or a $500 deposit uh, secure a private room. Now uh, I won't go back and read it over again but you can see you can just skip back and see in the document that this does not apply to those who are in a private room. Why? Well because if you're able to get a private room you're basically you have a way to pay this bill. You Again you either have very good insurance that has a history that's known for paying the hospital, which the hospital will accept, um, or you're putting up a cash up front. You're putting up $250 to $500, depending on what the hospital wants, and you will get a private room. Um, now, if you do not have, if you just show up empty pockets and you're banged up from a motorcycle accident or whatever, um, and you got no money on you, you got no insurance, um, you can, in for instance, with the, the provincial hospitals, uh, they will take you in, um, but getting out is the issue. Uh, they will treat you, but you're, you're going to be hard-pressed with this act uh, to leave. They simply will not let you leave. Um, and and you just that's when you've got to start making phone calls, and, and hopefully you're networked and you know some people or you know some expats or you can get somebody to pass a message to somebody back in the States or well, back in your home country. Uh, to send you some money. Um, now the good thing, the silver lining I suppose in all of this is that unless you're talking about uh, a really large um, medical issue like say uh, a heart transplant or uh, uh, cancer treatment or something, uh, most things like for instance uh, childbirth and broken leg and you know bronchitis that sort of thing you're talking about a bill that will probably end up somewhere in the area of under five hundred dollars 
Um, although if you get dengue, you could end up with a bill, or rabies, um, you could end up with a bill anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 US. Um, so if that's not a problem for you, then you don't have a problem. Um, however, according to this act, uh, if, if, you, if you don't have the money, when you're, when you're feeling better and you're ready, you're like, hey, okay, I'm feeling good, I'm ready to leave, um, you know, as, as they do that whole checkout process, now, when it comes time to checking out a hospital, they've got this part down, and they are gonna dot every I and, and cross every T before they let you out of that hospital. And uh, in fact, it can usually take about one to three hours for them to do this process, and that's with you paying. Somewhere along the way, if they figure out you don't have the money to pay, uh, you're not going anywhere. Um, you may as well get comfortable. You're basically now accruing a larger bill every day that you're, you're staying there. So now what I'd like to hear is uh, experiences uh, from you. This is a very important topic and I know plenty of you have lived in the Philippines, maybe even just got here for a three week visit and ended up in the hospital. Uh, I'd like to hear your, your experiences on this, uh, dealing with this, um, whether it's uh, your wife giving birth or you know, your, rel your wife's relative giving birth all of a sudden, there's complications, gotta go to the hospital, motorcycle accidents. Um, all these things um, you know let me know your situation your experiences share them in the comments um, so that we can all just sort of learn from this experience uh, the law is the law that's that's what it is um, again I'm, I'm not here to tell you uh, what to do about the law I'm not here to give you legal advice I'm just here reading the law to you um, and and it's public record it's something that every expat should know if he's gonna live here in the Philippines so I look forward to your comments, and uh, I'll see you there.